Buckle up because today we're going to be diving into some bullish news out of Argentina. It appears their notorious chainsaw wielding president, Javier Malay, well, he's at it again. We're talking fiscal mayhem, Bitcoin legal tender, and a whole lot of drama. Strap in because this one, it's going to get spicy. Party, party. Pero sin lugar a dudas, esta no es una tarea para tibios, esta no es una tarea para cobardes, esta no es una tarea para los políticamente correctos. Yo no me metí acá para estar guiando corderos, yo me metí acá para despertar de hoy. Welcome back to the most bullish Bitcoin news show on the planet. I'm your chief propagandist, Rustin. Now picture this, Argentina, a country known for its economic roller coaster rides. Well, they elected Javier Malay, a dude who's not afraid to shake things up. He stormed into office like Mises in a communist China closet, vowing to wipe out inflation faster than you can say central banking shenanigans. But in just months, Malay has whipped out his fiscal scalpel and slashed government spending and boom, he's now got Argentina running a budget surplus. Yeah, you heard that right. A surplus in Argentina. It's like watching a superhero save the day, but with spreadsheets and sound money. And also what's crazy here is the hero who is like the boss of the government is actually viewed by the government itself as Leatherface. <laughs> It's, it's so beautiful. But hold up, while well, this is absolutely awesome, I mean, he's cut approximately 45,000 federal workers, and that, that, that was just in his first 53 days. Afuera, afuera, fuera, afuera, afuera. But hold up, it ain't uh, all rainbows and fiscal butterflies. There have been battles, especially when the price tag started jumping like they're on a Weimar trampoline. Devaluation hits hard, but Malay, he's not flinching. He's playing the long game. Real tough decisions, they're going to bring real market reactions. And a lot of times to progress, to move forward, sometimes that comes with a little pain. Malay is preaching the gospel of monetary discipline and regulatory overhaul. It's like he's rewiring the whole economic motherboard in Argentina. Some call it bold, others call it bonkers, but hey, you got to respect the hustle. Now here's where it gets spicy. Malay's got this thing for Bitcoin. He's not shy about it either. While some believe he's all about dollarization, he's flirting with the idea of Bitcoin in Argentina's financial sandbox. But before we dive into that, let's take a second to recognize our sponsors, the masters of Bitcoin self-custody, the Bitcoin Way. Simply Bitcoin Originals are powered by the Bitcoin Way. They are your IT team in the Bitcoin world. Understanding the why of Bitcoin sometimes isn't challenging, especially in clown world, but the how can be. And at the Bitcoin Way, they are here to help bridge that gap, marrying the why to the how. They can help you with all things Bitcoin from setting up your first wallet and node all the way up to inheritance planning, accepting Bitcoin payments for your business, and all aspects of Bitcoin security and privacy. They even work with their clients on configuring routers, devices, and networks, and just improving their overall digital hygiene. Also, growing interest in UTXO management, the Bitcoin way has got you come. All right, here is the tweet. Freaking awesome. But wait, don't get too excited. Malay is not pulling like an El Salvador here. He's talking a little bit about regulatory frameworks and repealing legal tender laws as a whole, which I'm all about. The cream will always rise to the top, but this is not Bitcoin as the next national currency. As we know, Bukele has done in El Salvador. So keep your cool, Bitcoin maximalist. This is not our moonshot. Not quite yet. But it looks like the two leaders of a revolution taking hold in Central and South America are going to be kicking it soon. And I'm pretty sure they're going to be talking Bitcoin. The Bitcoin todo el tiempo. No sabemos bien qué son los Bitcoin, pero ya hay gente que lo, lo pondera como una especie de alternativa monetaria. ¿Vos crees que es posible en Argentina esa discusión? A ver, ¿cuál es el punto? El punto es que lo primero que hay que comprender es que el Banco Central es una estafa. ¿sí? Es un mecanismo por el cual los políticos estafan uh -huh. a las personas de bien con el impuesto inflacionario. El Bitcoin lo que está representando es la vuelta del dinero a su creador originario, que es el sector privado. El dinero es una invención del sector privado para resolver problemas, digamos, de lo que tiene que ver con, en una economía de trueque, sería la doble coincidencia 
y la indivisibilidad y después aparece el papel, digamos, como una cuestión de portabilidad. Uh -huh. O sea, porque en realidad vos tuviste distintas monedas. O sea, tuviste el lino, el trigo, digamos, la sal, de ahí viene salario, uh -huh, de ahí sí. la, la superstición de si se cae la sal en, en la mesa. Y eso evolucionó y, y las monedas que eligieron los agentes que fueron los individuos, eligieron la plata para las transacciones chicas, el oro para las transacciones grandes. Y eso después, digamos como era un peligro cargarlo, entonces, ¿qué hacían? Lo dejaban depositado y se llevaban un, un comprobante de que estaba eso ahí. Y después, en 1445, digamos, en el primer congreso de Génova, digamos, los estados se apropiaron de, digamos, de tener la exclusividad para poder emitir. Ese es que es el curso forzoso, que esta es la, la clave. ¿Por qué? Porque el curso forzoso es lo que le permite a los políticos robarte con el impuesto inflacionario. Uh -huh. El Bitcoin no, digamos, tiene un algoritmo y un día va a llegar a una determinada cantidad y no hay más. Y puede competir con otras monedas. De hecho, compite contra Ethereum, compite contra otras. ¿Y qué es lo interesante? Que es la vuelta al sector privado. Uh -huh. Pero ¿cuál es el problema? El problema es que los estados no te van a querer ceder que el curso forzoso. Porque del curso forzoso te estafan con el impuesto inflacionario. Uh -huh. Entonces, el Bitcoin es la reacción natural frente a la estafa que son los bancos centrales y que el dinero vuelva a ser privado y la contracara es que los, los políticos ladrones no te van a permitir ir contra el curso forzoso. ¿Qué es lo que pasa? Cuando vos tenés economías con alta inflación y el problema de la estafa es más claro, uh -huh. entonces hasta podés discutir, como digamos, planteo yo directamente, eliminar el banco central. Hey, of course it wouldn't be Argentina without a little dash of controversy. Malay's got his critics and they're going to be side-eyeing his every move from his fiscal cuts to his Bitcoin flirtations. But hey, you can't please everyone when you're in a sly roundabout way flipping an entire monetary system, the bird. Let's not forget, Malay's got this uh, Bill Belichick level game plan. Shut down the central bank, embrace Bitcoin, drop the mic. He's all about shock therapy. No half measures in this dojo. And as Malay steers Argentina through these uncharted waters, one thing is crystal clear, love him or hate him, he's rewriting Argentina's economic saga. It's a risky game, but hey, sometimes you get to roll the dice to make history. So what comes next for Malay and Argentina? What do you guys think? Let us know below. Will Bitcoin become their economic knight in shining armor or just another chapter in this wild ride? Hey, stay tuned. This ain't your grandma's economic forecast. Hit that like button, subscribe for more wild updates, share the sound money gospel, and did you miss the massively bullish and terrifying news from BlackRock and Saudi Arabia? Well, you better get on that. And have you been missing the number one live Bitcoin only news show on YouTube? Get it together! And remember, drunk, fat, stupid, and poor ain't no way to go through life. Catch you all tomorrow. Peace. If you prefer to go down with the ship, f*** you.